Hepatitis A is a highly contagious infection. It was first documented by Hippocrates in the 17th century, formerly known as infectious hepatitis. Hepatitis A shares the same symptoms with other viral hepatitis. Earlier, hepatitis A was distinguished from hepatitis B by its much shorter incubation time. Then, the serological development successfully identified hepatitis B virus in the 40s. However, hepatitis A was not made separated from other non-B infectious hepatitis until the 70s. During when the serological testing finally isolated the hepatitis A virus. In this lecture, I wish to accomplish the following objectives. Now let's draw a line here. This horizontal line represents time in weeks. The point zero is the time when one first made contact with the infectious pathogen. In this case, the pathogen is hepatitis A virus. Belonging to the family of Picorna viridae, hepatitis A virus is a positive stranded RNA virus. It has six genome types. Genotypes 1, 2, and 3 infect human, and genotypes 4, 5, and 6 infect simians. This virus is quite stable in the environment, which means that hepatitis A virus can last outside of a live host for months. Once entering the host's body, the virus goes to the liver, using the hepatic cells to replicate and assemble many more new viruses. There are two variants of hepatitis A virus. One variant is a naked, non-enveloped virus, which is secreted into the bile. Then it enters the intestine and is shed into the stool. The other variant of hepatitis A is a quasi-enveloped virus that is found in the infected person's serum. Hepatitis A is primarily transmitted via fecal oral route through person-to-person -person contact. Therefore, crowded environment, lack of sanitation, and poor hygiene practices greatly contribute to the spread of this infection. In addition, contamination of food and water remains a major source for outbreak, endemic, and sporadic infections. Uncooked or undercooked food and infected food handlers are found associated with outbreaks of hepatitis A. Transmission of hepatitis A through transfusion of blood and blood products is rarely reported. While the liver cells busy at making more and more viruses, the infection is first at the incubation period until the onset of disease when the infected person exhibits clinical symptoms. Incubation period for hepatitis A ranges from 15 days to 50 days, average 28 days. At the onset of the infection, the person experiences preecteric symptoms, including fever, chills, fatigue, nausea, anorexia, and abdominal discomfort. In a few days to a week later, these symptoms progress to ecteric phase, during when the patient manifests jaundice, dark urine, pale stool, and tender and enlarged liver, with pain at the right upper quadrant. Presentation and degrees of severity for clinical manifestations are age-related. Children younger than 6 years of age are mostly asymptomatic. The older children and adults do have symptoms, and more than 70% of them have jaundice. People older than 40 years of age very likely require hospitalization if infected. Hepatitis A is a highly contagious infection. The viral concentration in stool stays high during the time period between two weeks before and one week after the appearance of jaundice or elevated serum liver enzymes. Let's mark this period as the communicable period. As indicated, 
the greatest transmissible time for this infection is before symptoms by nature, which cannot alert people to take precaution, especially the close contacts to the patient. Before hepatitis A vaccines were introduced and recommended, children played a significant role in spreading this infectious disease. The younger children are asymptomatic and they do not necessarily have a good hygiene practice. In addition, children can shed hepatitis A virus for up to 10 weeks after the onset of the clinical manifestations. That's much longer than adults. Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices, ACIP, has identified the following groups of adults as at risk for hepatitis A infection. International contact. International travelers to the endemic regions of the world are at increased potential for exposure to this virus. People having close contact to international adoptees are also at increased risk for exposure. Most international adoptees for the United States families are from endemic regions. Men who have sex with men are also at risk. Although hepatitis A is not transmitted via sexual contact, the research data shows that not only outbreaks of hepatitis A were reported among this group of people, but also the similar viral strains were found among the infected people in this group. There are also outbreaks reported among drug users, regardless of the injectable or non-injectable drugs used. Poor hygiene, lack of sanitation, and percutaneous transmission are the risk factors associated with drug users contracting hepatitis A. Occupational exposure places people working with primates or people working in the laboratory settings at risk for hepatitis A infection. Homeless are exposed to hepatitis A infection due to inability to adhere to non-vaccinated preventive strategies. For example, access to a clean toilet usually is a challenge for homeless people. Furthermore, they cannot avoid crowded living environment. Incarcerated people are at risk for hepatitis A infection due to the association with the other two at-risk populations drug users, and homeless people. These two groups of people overrepresent the incarcerated people. People with underlying medical conditions are a concern. 87% of HIV-infected patients are susceptible to hepatitis A viral infection. Chronic liver disease does not increase the opportunity for contracting hepatitis A but it increases the intensity of liver inflammation or liver damage if the patient is infected with hepatitis A. In 2019, CDC defines hepatitis A incorporating multiple criteria, including clinical manifestations, laboratory test findings, and endemic linkages. Please note that hepatitis A cannot be distinguished from other hepatitis or be diagnosed using clinical manifestations only. The only confirmation of diagnosis comes from the serologic findings. Presence of hepatitis A viral RNA in either stool or blood confirms this infection. Hepatitis A viral RNA can be found in the blood within a week after exposure, and it can be detected in stool roughly a week after exposure, and it peaks at about two weeks before the onset of jaundice, gradually disappears in a week after the onset of jaundice. The other laboratory markers for acute hepatitis A infection is IgM anti-hepatitis A antibody. IgM anti-hepatitis A antibody can be detected within 5 to 10 days of symptoms, peaks in about a month, then gradually decreased to undetectable in about 6 months. The other serologic marker is IgG anti-hepatitis A antibody, which presents in the blood during early stage of the infection and lasts lifetime. It indicates a lifelong immunity to hepatitis A. The serologic markers can only confirm the infection or make diagnosis of hepatitis A. 
The actual damage to the liver is indicated through the elevated liver enzymes and bilirubin. The liver enzymes and bilirubin starts to climb up in about five to ten days before the onset of the symptoms, and they return to within normal limit two to three months after the onset. Treatment for hepatitis A infection is supportive only: rest, hydration, and symptom management. Hepatitis A infection is self-limiting, and majority of the patients recover on their own in two to three months. Less than 15% of patients might experience extended symptoms up to six months. Complications are rarely reported. Atypical complications may include immunologic, neurologic, hematologic, pancreatic, and renal extrahepatic symptoms. Fulminant hepatitis is the most serious complication. It can be fatal. Luckily. This complication rarely occurs. Prevention is always a better approach when it comes to healthcare. The good news is that hepatitis A can be prevented by vaccination. There are two types of vaccines available in the United States. Both hepatitis A vaccines are inactivated vaccines. Vectar and Havrix are the single antigen vaccines. They are given as two dose series. Recommended for people aged twelve months and older. The other type of hepatitis A vaccine is a combination vaccine, Trinrix, in which there are both hepatitis A and hepatitis B antigens. The primary series of Trinrix is a series of three doses for people at age eighteen years and older. Nursing care provided for hepatitis A covers concerns of prevention, people at risk, patient education, and support for recovery. Here, let's examine what has been discussed and find out what role nurses play and contribute to prevent infection, promote health, and facilitate recovery. Use the diluted household bleach solution to disinfect the surfaces. To dilute the household bleach, use one part of household bleach to 100 parts of tap water. Identify the transmission route and major risk factors that contribute to spread of the infection. Hepatitis A, B, and C are all reportable infectious diseases. Teach patient, family, and community on appropriate hand washing technique and encourage good hygiene practices. Teach the community on proper food handling. For instance, heating food at more than 185 degree Fahrenheit for at least one minute. Encourage the community members to take break from work once not feeling well. Conduct history intake. Collect data, including vaccination history and the possible exposure to an infection. Teach the family and patient to report to the physician if the patient's condition advanced to worse. Encourage rest. Promote hydration as tolerated. Reassure the patient that hepatitis A viral infection is self-limiting. Teach the family and patient to clean the surface of household items and encourage strict hand washing and proper hygiene practices. Teach the patient and family to take contact precaution. Encourage up-to-date vaccination. Encourage practice safe sex. Closely monitor patients with chronic liver diseases if they are infected with hepatitis A. Then again, encourage vaccination to those at high risk. Patient education on laboratory testing should be reinforced. Encourage rest. Promote fluid intake as tolerated. Provide comfort measures. Pain management. Monitor complications such as joint pain, rash, change of mental status, etc. Rash may indicate bleeding. Remember that liver produces coagulation factors. Change of mental status could indicate neurological complications. Short-term protection can be achieved with immunoglobulin of hepatitis A for pre- and post-exposure.
Immunoglobulin to hepatitis A has to be given within two weeks after exposure for it to be effective. Finally, vaccination. This is the last topic that we will discuss in this lecture. Teach the client on vaccination. Hepatitis A vaccine is included in routine schedule for children. It is indicated for children at age 12 months and older, and it is recommended for adults at risk. The dosage for adult should be double the dose given to children. Here is the table indicating two different single antigen hepatitis A vaccine. And we can see that the dosages given to adults are double the dosage given to children. There is also a combination vaccine available, Twinrix. This vaccine includes two antigens, hepatitis A and hepatitis B antigens. If a combination vaccine is chosen, know that this vaccine is for adults aged 19 years and older only. The primary series of Twinrix is a series of three doses, given at 0, 1, and 6 months. There is also an Accelerate schedule available for Twinrix. The Accelerate series is a four-dose series and is given at 0, 7 days, 21 to 30 days, then a booster at 12 months. Thank you very much for spending time with me. I look forward to seeing you again.